So to begin geometry, we want to talk about the basic building blocks, making sure that we're on the same page as far as our vocabulary goes. And when I use the word point, line, or plane, that you understand what I'm talking about. We're going to go beyond that. But to start, um, a point has zero dimensions. It's just um, a location in space, kind of like the tip of a pencil or your GPS location, or exactly where you're standing, um, or a point on a coordinate plane, like an XY point. This is how we, we represent it visually. We've got a dot, capital letter. Could be B, C, any, any capital letter we use to name a point. And then when we write it, we say point, whatever the letter is. A line, when you have two points, you can connect them with a line. And really that's a little misleading because there's actually a bunch of points that we place next to each other to make up the line. And so a line is a straight, continuous arrangement of infinitely many points. And so that's what I mean by there are infinite amount of points in here. We just name it by using two. So AB is a name of this line, or BA is a name of this line, and we put a line over top of it when we're naming it has the, the arrows going left and right to show you that it's a line. I'll clear up where, where we might be confused with something else. Um, it doesn't end, keeps on going on and on and on forever and ever. So zero dimensions, one dimension, and when you go two dimensions, um, like an XY plane, or a floor, or a wall, or a ceiling, or anything like that, or a football field, basketball court, could be a plane. It has two dimensions. Um, unlike all those things that I mentioned, though, it does not end. How we represent it visually, um, rather than just drawing a rectangle, I like to draw it making it look like it has some dimension to it, and so I make it look like a parallelogram, kind of like it's a, something laying down, like the floor. And so we name it by saying plane and three points that make up the plane, A, B, C. So A, B, and C are all in the plane, and so that's the name of it. I can also name it by just using one capital letter. Notice that M, plane M, M does not have a point, and so I know that M is the name of the plane rather than the name of the point. And one more way of naming a line I didn't talk about, um, I can say line M, and I use a lowercase letter. And that's to represent the lowercase letter just um, sitting here by the edge of the line. A couple other words. Um, collinear. Collinear. Pretty straightforward. Um, just meaning that they three or more points that are in a line. We always say three or more because if you had two or more, two or more points are always going to be in a line. Collinear, meaning they share a line. Root word line there. Um, and related to that, non-collinear, three points that are not in a line. These are going to be very important descriptive words. When somebody says three points are collinear, you'll know how to draw it. Or three points are non-collinear, you'll know how to draw it. In the same way, you have coplanar points. Any three points or more that share the same plane are called coplanar. Um, three points by themselves are always coplanar. Um, it's weird because sometimes you think, well, what if one was above? Well, then it'd be on the plane that sort of cut diagonally. Imagine the triangle that is formed with the three points, and it helps me out imagining what the plane might look like. So three terms that I want to make sure you understand the difference of, because we've talked about line, a line. I want to talk about um, a segment and a ray. So a line, like we talked about, keeps on going on and on and on forever and ever. But if it stops at point A and point B, it's called a line segment, meaning just a part of the line. And so where we named the line with the arrows, using the two points, again, order didn't matter. With a segment, we just put a segment line. Some people like putting dots. I think it takes a little long. Um, but we put the segment line to name a segment. And that way we know it's ending. A lot more things in life are segments because there aren't many things that keep going on and on and on forever. And last but not least, the ray. A ray has a starting point, 
and then one side of it doesn't end. So it starts just like rays from our sun start at the sun and then keep on going and on going. And when you name a ray, you start it with the starting point, A, and then which direction it's going. It's going through B. So you would never name this ray BA because it's starting at A and going towards B. So you always want to name it like this. So the order matters when you're naming a ray. All right, another new word, congruent. Congruent. Congruent, when people hear it and when people are explaining it, they, they automatically go to the word equal. And it's very, very similar to equal, but I want to make a couple distinctions um, because it is, there's a slight difference. So first off, congruent, this is the symbol we use for congruent. Looks like an equal sign with a little squiggle above it. Um, so the squiggle is kind of like your approximation sign, um, but it doesn't mean approximate, but that's what congruent looks like. So two segments are congruent if and only if they have the same length. And so AB is three centimeters long, CD is three centimeters long. Because they're the same length, they are congruent. Now one thing I've done here is I use these little tick marks to represent that they are congruent. And so use these marks to show that they're congruent. If in a picture you've already used the single marks and you want to show that something else is congruent, you could use a double mark or a triple or so on and so forth. Um, AB is congruent to CD is how we say it. This segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Notice how I included the segment bars over top. If you want to use the equal sign, you're going to have to talk about distances. And so if you want to talk about distances, you'll not use the segment line. You don't use the segment line if you're talking about distances. So the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from C to D. Or you could say the lengths are equal. But notice that we will never, ever, ever say this. AB is not congruent to CD. Sorry, not equal to CD. Segment AB is not equal to segment CD. And why that is, why they are not equal, is because they are different. Just like if two people are the same height, I don't say that they are equal. I don't say that they are the same person, but I might say that they are the same height. And so in the same way, I don't say two segments are equal unless they are the same segment. So AB is congruent. Segment AB is congruent to segment CD because they have the same length. Um, midpoint is another word. Midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. In other words, the midpoint is right in the middle of two points. Um, so M is the midpoint of A segment AB. M is the midpoint of segment AB. So AM is congruent to segment MB. Those two segments are congruent. Um, and then Notice I mark these with the, the double hash marks uh, just to say, okay, this is congruent to this. And then AM, the distance from A to M, is equal to one half of the distance from A to B. That midpoint cuts that in half exactly. Now, one thing that we should say is that it has to be in line. Midpoints are collinear. And we'll come back and talk about um, the midpoint formula if you're, you've been given a coordinate and things like that. Um, another word for describing what M has done is called bisect. Bisect. The midpoint bisects a segment. And so bisecting means that you're cutting it in half. The midpoint's cut it in half. Other things that could bisect are a line. So my pencil is representing a line. It is bisecting AB. It doesn't have to go perpendicular, it could go on the diagonal. Or it could be a ray that starts from M and goes this way. That could bisect. Um, a number of things can bisect, but it always means that it's cutting in half and that you have two congruent parts. So suppose that we have a midpoint. M is the midpoint of AB, segment AB. So we can draw a picture right off the bat. M is the midpoint of segment AB. 
if AM equals 50 centimeters, notice no segment line, so we're talking about the distance from A to M, and the distance from M to B is 3x plus 5, and that's what I've written over here. Note with no segment lines, it represents distance or length. And so as soon as I get this, I'm going to mark up my picture some more, and I get, okay, 50. A to M is 50, and MB is 3x plus 5. Because I know a midpoint cuts it into two congruent parts, I know that 50 has to equal 3x plus 5, and so I can make a little equation. 50 equals 3x plus 5. Um, I can subtract 5, get 45, I can divide by 3, and get 15. Again, I wanted to come back to segment AM is congruent to segment MB. The distance from A to M is equal to the distance from M to B. And so there we're talking about the length or the distance. So segments are congruent, lengths are equal. And last example. Suppose Z is the midpoint of XY. W is the midpoint of ZY. V is the... Okay, so we're already lost. Um, because there's a lot of letters here. And so what I want to do is I want to take it just one point at a time. And so you can easily say, okay, Z is the midpoint of XY. Z is the midpoint. W is the midpoint of ZY. Okay, so this is ZY. Even though we have a, the sentence continuing, anytime you have the same letters mentioned again, you would want to include them in the same picture. You don't want to redraw a picture. And so W is right here. There's not a second line with a Z and a Y. And then it continues. V is the midpoint of WY. So this is V. And so VY is 10. And then the rest I've got written down here. But so VY is 10, so then midpoint makes that whole thing 20. ZY, 40, excuse me, and XY, 80. You can keep on doubling it as you go around. So the point in these last two examples have been taking a description and drawing a picture. Sometimes there's only one way to draw a picture. Sometimes there's multiple ways to draw a picture. Um, but... Either way, after I get done drawing the picture, I want to make sure that everything I did, okay, Z is the midpoint, yes. W is the midpoint of ZY, yes. V is the midpoint of WY. And the more complicated it gets, the more you want to double check your work. So, those are some important words, point, line, plane, collinear, coplanar, rays, line segments, congruency, midpoint, bisecting. All those words, I want you to know right off the top of your head. We'll practice them with flashcards. We'll practice them in class. Let's keep learning.